I'm Tom Ray from the band Lorenzo's Music, and you're listening to the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. If this is your first time listening, this show is about meeting musicians and creators and talking to them about what they do. The past few shows, I've gone out and met people or people have contacted me through our email list. The person I talked to today signed up to be on the show at our website. My name is Dominic. I make music under the name Gilman Mom. I've done other projects under various names, but that's like my current thing. He's a musician that lives in Berkeley, California. And also I find out that he's kind of a filmmaker as well as a musician, or at least he's made films out of the music that he makes, which is kind of intriguing. What was the transition from going by your own name to then picking this name to where you are now? Well, I started um, doing music under my own name uh, and releasing it kind of without the intent of, you know, doing anything huge, just sort of like, that was kind of me getting my foot in the door with like minor music production. And like, it was, it's all like sample based. Um, and that was just sort of really basic, just like loops that I found, like kind of stacking them on top of each other. And there wasn't much thought put into it. I wouldn't say artistically, but at least, I don't know. I just kind of wanted it out there. You know, as the years went by, for the lack of a better word, I kind of started to cringe a little bit um, at it. And I was like, okay, let's get out of that. Let's do a different name. Um, no, but I applaud that. I mean, you were you were like, uh, I'm testing out these new things and I'm going to experiment with it, put it out, see what sticks. I mean, that's the impression I'm getting from what you said. Yeah, definitely. And I've done stuff under a bunch of different names and... At this point, it's sort of like I'll do kind of a set of albums under a name and have that kind of be a concept in multiple album forms. Does that make sense? Like multiple forms as in a concept that goes across albums, you're saying? Right. So like a concept album, a concept album, a concept album, and then the entire thing kind of comes together as one thing. Maybe a little esoterically, like not necessarily incredibly linear, but... Okay. That's the idea. I was looking at some of your videos too. Now, first you have one that's like a mini film. You actually describe it as it's somewhere between a home movie and an art film. And yeah. I realized as I was watching it, I'm like, wait, this has been on for like six minutes. And I, <laughs> I look down and I'm like, oh my God, this is like a, a 40 minute film. So, <laughs> yeah. so can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, well, so, yeah that's part of Gilman Mom. And that album, uh, Manifest Destiny, was a pretty vulnerable album for me like i put my face on the cover for the first time and like it was oh. sort of an exercise in vulnerability i kind of wanted to document that really mostly for myself i don't know i i just kind of I wanted to get uh, a vague visual stimulation there you know it, none of those little clips that go with the songs really have a story or a point necessarily that is just sort of the feeling and that was the idea so like you know, if someone wanted to listen to the album and then like kick back, not think about anything, just put that on, look at it. You know, it's no, it's no Lemonade by Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think to make that reference to brought it up. That's amazing. So how did you go about making that film? Like, okay, you, you didn't just think I'm going to sit down one day and make a half hour video album. What would you call it? A, vid a film and a video album? Yeah. Either, either or. Yeah. Just a, a video music thing. I don't yeah. know. I don't really have a label for it. I guess film, if I had to. If I had to yeah, I would it. agree. It started off with me just not really having an idea for a music video, but saying, um, hey, let's go out and shoot and just do something and see what happens. And did you know people that did film or do you do film? Like, how? Because it, I mean, it's pretty well done. Not. In, oh, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. No, I just... Uh, it's just my amateur like filmmaking. Yeah, just me and my sister for the first one. We just went on a drive and, and did some uh, shoots. And that kind of turned into like when I would hang out with a friend, I would, me and the friend would just shoot and see what happens. So there's a lot of uh, little memories I have in there with a bunch of different people in my life with each kind of individual one. Yeah. Um, so for me, it, it reminds me of all these different people in my life, even though Really, none of them are featured in it. How long of a time period did you do that? It took maybe two or three months. Wow. Yeah. All right. That's yeah, actually so around what I was thinking. I was I was expecting it was going to be two or three months or you were going to amaze me by like going, oh, that was like a project that was a year in the making. You know? <laughs> uh, no, two days. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you even come up with it? Did you wing it? Did you storyboard it out? I would say it was winged for the most part. It would be more like I would be thinking about a sp- song, a song specifically, and some sort of visual would come to mind. And be like, okay, let me go in that environment that I'm thinking about and yeah. just kind of film the ambience and, and get something out of it. I've done some stuff on CDs, but none of them have really sold. I just did this huge thing where I uh, I made an album and I, I bought, like, I got these custom wood boxes made and kind of stuffed it full of, like, memory fuel. Oh. Um, like, it has a CD, got lavender in it. Uh, it's got some, like, Polaroids. But I... I I'm selling them, but I'm mostly just giving them out to friends because I don't really, for me, no one's really bought CDs before. Do you play out a lot or do you just release stuff? I just release stuff. And then my thing is like, I'm attempting to do like screenings of music videos and like that film potentially. Oh, like that got played at like a film festival, like in uh, Florida. uh, How did you manage that? I found the application on like Film Freeway, if you know what that is. Uh-uh. Yeah, that's just sort of my my route, like in the live sphere. None of the stuff that I I do, it's also like post production oriented that I can't really play it live. Yeah, no, I get that, and and yeah. also, I mean, you do it all yourself too. You don't necessarily have a band that you play with. Correct. Yeah, it's it's just uh, me and samples and a little bit of piano. Now, before you'd mentioned when you were first releasing under different names, you were talking about how you were experimenting with loops and all that kind of stuff. What is your style that led up to what you do? Like, what what do you use to create the music? It's a pretty basic, like, DAW. It's called um, Mixcraft. It's a little obscure, but definitely like a, like, hey, you use this to learn how to use a DAW, but I never... You never moved on. A... No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried, like, Ableton and, like, Pro Tools, but I don't know, just... You know, it does what it needs to do, and then you can use plugins and kind of get whatever you want out of it. So it's kind of a blank slate. You make it like what you want it to be. So I just, uh, all the stuff under my name, or most of it at least, was just like the loops that came in Mixcraft's library. <laughs> you were uh, even using the original loops. I love it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, just a bunch of like uh, kind of mashups of those. That kind of graduated to, there's a site called Looperman where you can find a bunch of Creative Commons loops. And then once in a while, I'll find uh, like an old like, jazz loop uh, or old jazz songs, kind of try to make something out of it. And there's a lot of ambience in uh, the stuff that you released on the new album. Is yeah. that is that something you've always done or how did that how did that come to play? No, that was fairly new. It's something that I, for some reason, hadn't really thought of. But as soon as I got that idea, I was like, oh my God, why haven't I been doing that forever? Um, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm really kind of into soundscapes and the depth that you can go with music i used to really be into i mean i still am uh like old like sci-fi ish album covers where it's like you have the music playing but there's this whole world in the cover right i don't think it's explored as much as it could be in music with sort of the background and you know the field there so Hmm. it's an attempt at that when you sit down to write what's your process what's what do you do to I mean, do you work off of something? Do you do it in one sitting? How long does it take you? I just asked you like 20 questions in a row. I'm sorry. I'm trying (laughs) not to do that. (laughs) Um, I would say kind of depends on the song. Some songs I could do like the last song on Manifest Destiny was just happened in two hours. Okay. Um, And that that was all loops that just kind of lined, felt like they lined up and then I would go back and kind of cut things out, rearrange a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say... Usually for a song, I'll spend maybe a, a day or a day and a half working on it, uh, distance myself for a while, and then come back and see if it still sounds good. Maybe, you know, things aren't mixed so great, and I need to go back and pay attention to it and give yeah. it some love. And I, I think I'm, I'm kind of, in a sense, always working on a song until an album releases. I'll agree with that. I get that. How did you come up with the name for your band? Or uh, would I call it a band? Your project, I guess. How would you? Yeah, there's no band. Yeah, yeah I guess project's there. <laughs> so that was the, the Tumblr name of an ex. And I just kind of stole it. I'm from Berkeley, California. Okay. And Gilman's like a relatively known punk club. So she, or they would frequent there. And I kind of stole it. So yeah. was I, she was she a mom at the time? I, I'm still no, slightly she, confused. She was like, like the, the mom of the friend group. 
Oh, one of those. Yeah. I get yeah. it. Okay. So how do you promote yourself? So what kind of stuff do you do to do that since you're not playing out? It, it's been kind of, uh, what's that word? Trial and error. There we go. Okay. Uh, I started by basically just like throwing it out to a bunch of blogs, like cold calling them saying, hey, here's my stuff. You want to oh. check it out? Okay. It would kind of work like for every, you know, hundred, you'd get maybe five if you were lucky. And at the end of the day, there's not that much, that many listens coming through those. The next thing I did was like, okay, well, music videos are good. Let's use like YouTube's ad services to try to, to get on that. And like, it will generate you a lot of views, but the amount of views that are like either legitimate or like really draw people in are questionable uh, in my view. Okay. So it's still a work in progress. I think for some reason, just kind of having it on the free music archive, getting a couple of posts on their like front page has been just incredible. Like that's got me like a lot more than anything else has. And it's just amazing. That whole community honestly is insane. I love them. The main video, or actually you're averaging about 11 K 13 K on most of your stuff. Most of that is through like the Google advertising. That's been okay. It's actually really cheap. It's yeah, it's it's insanely cheap. It's so expensive to advertise on Facebook. It's like pennies to advertise yeah. for YouTube. It's right, it's and amazing. then you you pay like cost per click, so you can get like you can basically like map out how many clicks you're buying. Essentially, it's insane. <laughs> I would say the weirdest story that I've had with like someone using my music in their thing is there's this dude that used one of my songs in his like drone video. He went like camping in, I think Vancouver and did this awesome like drone video where it's going around showing all these awesome like waterfowls and things. And I'm trying to contact him because I'm like, this is amazing. Let me have him try to make me a music video out of that. That would be super mm. cool because he used almost the whole song, but not all of it. Yeah. But he is not using YouTube. It turned out it was this like weird clone website called um, DTube. It was weird because all of their um, all their views were measured in in dollars. I was trying to like make an account because you can't message someone if you don't have an account. And it's like, hey, pay twenty dollars in Bitcoin to me, and you can get an account, or wait for a month. Huh? It's it was connected to something called Steam.io. Yeah. Is that something familiar? Yeah. No, that's the yeah, that's gaming stuff. Huh? Yeah. I mean, it's gone now. You look at it, and it's a GoDaddy site. Good, because it, it felt kind of skeevy. <laughs> yeah, no, it, and that is weird. So that's the give and take from people being able to use your stuff. It's yeah, but also sometimes it's you. You never think, know who's going to see it. it. It doesn't sound like yeah. it was anything malicious. It's just the service Absolutely. he was using. It was like, what's this thing now? I mean, to tell you the truth, when you first said it at first, I thought it was on a porn site. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> that would be an honor. I've I've actually met a dude who has had his music in the background of, of porn <laughs> stuff because they found it online and he had some stuff that sounded kind of, I, I want to say porn-like. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like that laid back funk. Yeah. No. And I talked to him and I, I thought that was so funny. And, and I'm like, and you know this how? <laughs> still that's pretty cool i mean the closest yeah. we got was uh it was used in the background of a photo shoot video for like playboy in portugal i like the fact that you were going to reach out to the guy and have him do a video for you though that was yeah, really cool it was amazing it was like mind-blowingly cool stuff yeah um and I, I love it when people use my my stuff in their videos like it's so cool that your art can contribute to someone else's art I'm going to score my friend's play, which is coming up, but that'll be different. How did that come about? So she just kind of decided to start her own like theater company. And they're, they're right now she's getting funding, but I think it's mostly uh, locked away that it's happening. And she's been following me and my music forever since I've been doing it, really. And she wanted me to compose for it. So it'll be... <laughs> Wow. It'll be cool. How are you going to go about this? So the style that she wants is is something that I have a fairly specific method for. So it's like I'll take um, really like old like 30s, 40s jazz songs and layer them on top of each other and kind of destroy them on top of each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, it gets this kind of eerie, goopy feeling. And that's like the play that she's doing. It has a similar vibe. 
Okay. So it, it kind of matches up. Is it going to be in the background or is it going to go with what the actors are doing? Like, I'm curious because I've seen, so my familiarity with it is there's movie scoring, but then the play stuff I've seen, well, the only stuff that I've actually really studied is like what uh, Tom Waits did with like the Black Rider out in Germany. I saw some of that mm-hmm. on YouTube and I'm like, yeah, it, it goes with the play and they act out to the music. So yeah. is that what it's going to do for you? I, I don't know yet. Um, okay. That would be, that would be great. I think that's a really awesome use of, of music. I, I, I think people tend to, in other mediums, use music as like a transitional thing or like super background music and not necessarily like a, a dance, like you're flowing with the music. I, I don't know if that's what she's going to do with her play, but that would be, very nice. I guess we'll find out. When is it supposed yeah, to we'll happen? Find out. I don't. I think it's like a six month period of like rehearsals and, and, and getting it done. So it'll be a like while. like coming up soon. Working on six months of rehearsals or uh, whenever they like completely finish funding. So it could be a couple months when they start. Could be okay longer. Wow, you got something coming up, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so the look and feel of the of the new album. How did you decide how you were going to make that look? Wait, sorry, which one? The the newest one. And I, I guess I don't know who that girl is. She's in some of your videos. Oh, that's my girlfriend. Okay. Her I, I assumed, but I didn't want to, you know. <laughs> uh, the theme, I guess, was sort of like the crumbling of a, a relationship and then kind of the bog of in between and then starting anew. And that album is kind of the end of that process. Yeah. And beyond her representing that coming to completion and fruition, she's just kind of my muse and that album is supposed to kind of represent like a really warm like summery youthful feel and it's a feeling that I, I've never really known how to like express in words so I kind of wanted to do that in music uh, and at the same time kind of the, so the end of the album before it kind of blossomed into this like more cheery warm place and I wanted to expand on that and I've been really interested in in jazz for a long time now, and that this was kind of my deepest attempt at, at doing that. That's not really the style that I've been able to pull off. Yeah. So it it was it was more of a throw in that direction. Okay. And you didn't go to school for any of this, did you? Or? Nope. Okay. So you're no, just all just... self taught. Mm-hmm. Okay. You just one day you decided I'm going to be a musician, and that was it. <laughs> it was. I don't think I ever really considered myself. Uh, a musician. I still kind of feel like there's an asterisk by my name if I if I say that. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yeah, I, I just kind of I think of it more of like a audio collage. The things I do. I think that the process itself is you're creating something. It doesn't matter how you do it. I started experimenting in like Garage Band when I was like maybe twelve at my uncle's place. I, I've always sort of had that interest, and in whenever I would like find a piano at someone's house or whatever, I'd just go and mash keys and think what I was doing was pretty. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So it just, um, I never really gave it up. I, I always thought of it as something like, oh, I'm, I'm doing this now. I'm working with samples now, but I'll learn how to play an instrument later. I'll, I'll do it for real later. Yeah. Nope. No, it didn't happen. Yeah. I, I know what um, you mean. I've been trying to figure out how to play guitar for like 10 years now. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been working with uh, some people on the Creative Commons Music Awards. Oh, uh, okay. You are involved in that. Okay. Yes. I wasn't sure and or not. All right. I'm taking over now for various reasons and just kind of trying to develop that and, and get kind of on a on a more professional level there and just kind of presenting it in, in a more elevated way. And so we're doing right now, we're doing um, superlatives that like people can vote on. You guys are in there in yes. a few categories. Yeah, no, um, I like that. We're about to put her up on the Free Music Archive pretty soon. Um, people oh, can cool. Go vote. And we just want to get people involved because we just had some stuff that were that was like judge voted. We want to get people in there. And how are you finding the people that are judging and all that? I was curious about that when it came about. So initially, I, I didn't find anybody. Uh, it was all through. So there's Doug and Mike from Block Sonic, and they had uh, a network of people that they put together. Okay. Um, and I just I just saw that they were doing this, and I was like, hey, I want to get in on this, and I did. If you'd like to check out more of Dominic's stuff, 
You can listen to it online at gilmanmom.bandcamp.com. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe to this show at lorenzosmusic.com, where you can also download all of our music for free or for free use. On the next show, I'll be talking to a musician who's out in Europe. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you later. Later.